Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I can see people just joining now. Lovely to see you all. So while we wait for everyone else to join, if you could put in chat, please, um, something that's gone well for you in this past week. What has gone well for you in the past week? So if you can put that in chat or something you've enjoyed doing. I wait for other people to join the session. So for me, uh, my best friend is over from Tokyo. So he lives out there and uh, yeah, I've got to see him. So that was a great thing for me. It happened in the last week. So for you, what's, something, what's gone well? What have you enjoyed doing? What have you had fun with in the last week? So hopefully everyone can hear me. I have been having um, internet issues this morning, but I hope that everyone can hear me okay. Chat is disabled. Ah. Thank you very much for letting us know. Anything that we can do, Lizzie, about the chat being disabled? Please. So please bear with us. I'm not sure if there's anything I can do. Anything we can do about? Okay, hopefully, can you try chat again, please? Hopefully that should be working now. Thanks very much, Lizzie. So what has gone well for you in the last week? What have you enjoyed doing? What has been fun for you in this last week? Yes, chat's working again. So your school started. Yep, getting back into the routine, school runs. Lovely walk at the weekend, that's great to hear. Hopefully there weren't any showers, and they avoid those. What else have people enjoyed and had fun with doing in the last week? Beach swim after work. Oof, was that cold in the water? I've got to do bad booked holiday, fantastic. Positive team meeting and meeting face to face, getting me in person, brilliant. And your friends, baby shower, of course. Ah, yes. Different type of shower, not a rain shower. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. What your daughter her first car? Ah, oh, fantastic. I bet she was very appreciative of that. Good, good. So yeah, you got lots of brownie points, I think, for getting the first car, yeah, I'm sure you did there. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so good morning. Um, good morning if you're in the UK and Europe. Um, for anyone else in the world, it might be good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Collinson. I'm Strengths Profile Consultant at Catfinity. Um, and congratulations on completing your free starter profile uh, and joining us today. Uh, and what, we're, what are we going to cover? So we will, throughout the session, we've got about an hour together here today. Um, so we're going to look at the strengths approach um, and some of the science behind um, strengths uh, and the benefits of taking a strengths approach. Um, we'll look at being your best self with your real life strengths, um, avoiding burnout with learned behaviours and weaknesses, and release your untapped potential through your unrealized strengths and then thinking about uh, embracing strengths as you move forward because it's fantastic that you've taken your strengths profile um, but it's about how can you really embed uh, and embrace strengths moving forward so if you it would be really handy if you have your um, profile to hand and um, so we can work through this together today um, if you have it um, on a piece of paper uh, print it out old school style or if you can have it electronically as well so if you have that to hand that would be really helpful as we work through the session 
Um, if you have any questions, please use Q&A um, and we'll answer those as we go through, or please use chat as well to contribute as we work through. So let's start with the strengths approach and introducing strengths. Um, so there are five fundamentals of the strengths approach. Um, traditionally, um, when it comes to problem solving, it's like, what's wrong? How do we fix it? Um, and that's true really of psychology uh, historically, um, looking at deficit, what's going wrong and how can we get almost from like minus five to zero. Um, whereas strengths approach um, is an element of positive psychology. So positive psychology looks at what's going right, how we thrive and how we're successful uh, and how we perform our best. Um, so with the strengths approach is focusing on what is right and what is right and what can we do, how can we do that more often? Um, this next bullet point is something that I found absolutely enlightening when I first uh, discovered strengths, um, and that is every person has strengths. We all have strengths. Um, people quite often are very uh, good at being able to say, well, I need to do this. I'm not good at this. I need to improve this. But actually having a language of strengths, which we do now, um, it's good. It gives us insights into the strengths that we do have. Um, it can be the smallest thing to make the biggest difference. Um, so for me, uh, I'm right-handed. So if I wanted to practice uh, to write faster and neater, it would make sense to practice with my right hand. Um, and doing such a small thing could make a big difference. Whereas practicing with my left hand, you know, it might become so you might be able to read it just about over time. It would still be a bit of a scrawl. Um, our greatest potential is from our strengths as opposed to solely focusing on weaknesses um, and successes in compensating for weaknesses only when using strengths. So thinking about, you know, is a, a weakness critical, um, goal critical, career critical? Um, and if it is, how can I combine my strengths uh, with this weakness in order to make, mitigate it? So that's the strengths approach. Um, but let's get you involved a bit now. So we're going to do an exercise here. I will kindly be your volunteer for the day. Um, but what I'd like you to do, so I'm going to talk about something that drains me. OK, so for about 30 seconds, I'm going to talk about something that drains me. Um, and what I'd like you to do is take notes on what you see and what you hear. Um, and then in chat, note down what you see and what you hear as I talk about something that drains me. OK. Um, so something that drains me is uh, doing the weekly food shop. Um, because first of all, I have to write a list. Um, and so if I'm doing it on a Monday, I've no idea what I want to eat on Thursday. And I've got to think, oh, well, what do I want then? And then because I've got full time, um, the only time to go to the supermarket is when it's peak time, so it's busy um, or crowded. So it seems to take forever to get round because lots of people. Uh, then I get to checkout till there's a huge queue normally. Uh, and then it's not finished there because I've got to come home, I've got to unpack it all. Um, so that's something that really drains me. Okay, so what did you notice there? What did you see and what did you hear? If you can put that in chat, please. Uh, negative things are the focus, good. What else did people see and what did they hear? Uh, tedious vibes, yeah, reasons why you can't do it, quite depressing. Body language, yeah. Uh, negative verbal language, strained body language, yeah, looking down. It's a mundane task, yes. Looking down, lots of erms, good spot. Scrunched your face and looked everywhere, yeah. So excellent, excellent. I have, when, I, when I do you do this exercise and I use this example, because I, I try to mix it up a bit, um, and people say, well, why don't you do an online shop? It's like, well, I've still got to do the write the list, I've still got to unpack it all. So yeah, it only, only cuts out a little bit of the pain for me doing the weekly shop. Uh, good. So part two now of this exercise. Again, I'm going to volunteer. Um, but I'm going to share with you something I love to do for 30 seconds. So take notes again on what you see and what you hear. Um, so something I love to do, I love it when someone comes up to me with a challenge, something they're really stuck on, 
Um, and I love it when I sort of just listening and processing what they say. Uh, and then we start coming up with ideas and going, we can try this. And what about that? Uh, and this worked before. What about we do this, but maybe tweak it a little bit. Um, and then we're just coming up with ideas. And then when we actually come, agree on something that, yeah, this is what I do. And then seeing it through to completion and actually overcoming that problem. That is something I love to do. Good. So what did you see and what did you hear this time? What did you see and what? More eye contact and higher energy, eyes brightening, good, yeah, animated, enthusiastic, positive energy, upbeat, expressive tone, excited, smiling, yeah, lots of energy, hand gestures, good spot there, very good. Bright eyes, positive language, happy, yeah, bright eyes, good. So, whether you know it or knew it or not, you have just demonstrated your ability to strength spot. And that's a really key skill to develop. Um, so as I said at the beginning, it's fantastic you've taken strengths profile, your strengths profile, but actually being able to embed it further, the strengths approach is really key. Um, so it's good strength spotting exercise, thinking about when you're interacting with other people, you know, is there a shift in energy, in the tone, words, uh, gestures from their normal activity? You know, is it something that could be draining for them or is it actually something that could be that they love to do and, and potentially a strength of theirs? Um, but also noticing yourself, you know, that self-awareness that when maybe something is draining or when something is energizing you as well. So very well done. So some of the things to be look out for in uh, strength spotting, um, is the language that people use. So you quite rightly pointed out it's quite negative language. And I was talking about something that uh, drains me, but then really positive language, um, something that uh, I enjoy doing. Um, rich examples. So I have 30 seconds to talk about doing the weekly shot. I probably couldn't have talked much more about it. However, if I was talking about uh, problem solving, then I could probably come up with loads and loads of different examples if I had more than 30 seconds to talk about it. So look at those times when there are rich examples. Um, authentic, when people uh, come across as like natural and authentic as well, can be an indication of strength at play. You know, you, you spotted, you know, energy, different energy levels. Um, a lot more energy when I was talking about something I love to do. As you notice that the tone and pace change between the two examples. Um, look out for things that you or others volunteer to do. It may be that that um, is a sign of a strength at play for the activity that you're volunteering to do. Think about your to-do list and those items that never get on it, because never make it onto it because you love doing them. Or alternatively, look at the items that are always on your to-do list because you never want to get around to doing them. So look at the things that you volunteer to do. Uh, and then finally, Growth, so think about the areas of development that you wish to, to uh, work on. Again, it could be an indication of a sign of strength is at play in that activity. So say very well done in your strength spotting skills there, fantastic. Before we move on, so next question for you is, what would your definition of a strength be? So in chat, what would your definition of a strength be? What's a strength to you? What is your definition of a strength? Something that we're good at? Yeah. What else do people think? What the strength definition? Something you do well, good. Something that feels effortless. Like that. Ties in with the authentic and strength spotting. You enjoy it if you're happy at doing it, good. Something you're naturally good at. Bringing back in that authenticity, yeah. Something you enjoy and can do without a lot of thought. Something that energizes you. Something you're good at, something you could use as a source for your confidence. Good. So here at Catfinity, we've, there, are, there are three elements that uh, make up a strength. And these are the things we measure when you're taking your strength profile assessment. Um, so performance. So how well you perform uh, when using these strengths. 
um, energy, so how energized you are, how much enjoyment you get when you're using them, and also how often you get to use them, how frequently do you use these strengths. So these are the three elements uh, that we, we measure when um, we are, you know, you're taking the assessment. But let's look now at the strengths profile uh, model of development. Um, so we have four quadrants here, and we when we do a debrief or we start looking at a profile, we start with uh, realized strengths. So we start with the realized strengths quadrant, and then we move our way anti-clockwise round. So realized strengths, these are the ones that tick all three boxes of the previous slide. So these are you perform well at, um, you find energizing when you use them, uh, and you get to use them frequently. So if you look at your report, Quite often people go and look at their realized strengths quadrant and go, yep, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I, I do understand that about myself. Um, and we say to use these wisely. So initial research into strengths um, suggested to understand what your strengths are and use them as much as possible. Whereas it's slightly more nuanced now um, and saying use them in the right context and in the right uh, amount. Uh, so the right time and the right amount. Um, so for me, uh, humour is one of my realised strengths, my top realised strengths. Um, and I know that I need to use it uh, correctly and wisely. You know, there are times when it's inappropriate to bring in the humour strength. So we say use it wisely. Um, uh, then we have our learned behaviours quadrant. So these are the things that you perform well at, but to find de-energising. So quite often for people, this is sort of a, a light bulb moment for them, the learned behaviours quadrant, in the fact that they can perform well at something, but actually it is de-energising for them. They find it quite draining doing it. Um, and it could be for a number of reasons. Um, it could be a realised strength that we've overplayed. So for me, if I was taking strengths profile 10, 15 years ago, um, when I was doing a lot of team sport, I know competitive would have been a real life strength of mine, but I overdid it. I played too much and for too long. Uh, and now for me, um, competitive is a learned behavior of mine. Um, so it means that I can perform it well, but I don't find it energizing. So I'll give an example here. Um, I don't know if people uh, on, on today's session uh, do Wordle. Um, so it's, you have five letters and you've got to guess what the word is and it reveals you know, where the letters are. Um, so for some reason, I've ended up in three or four different Wordle WhatsApp groups. Um, so when I wake up in the morning, I know that I'll probably have four or five messages from people who've completed their Wordle for the day. So my first thought is, oh, oh no, got, I've got to make sure that I don't, you know, I get it today and I probably need to get it better than the other people. Um, so it's de-energizing to begin with, but then they go, right, but I do have, I can't not get it today. So the competitiveness comes in, so I can still do it well, but it is de-energizing for me. Um, so we say there's a couple of things that we can do with our learned behaviors. Um, it's just to be mindful um, that we're doing a task uh, and it is de-energizing for us. And quite often people um, burn, and this is where they burn out because they're using, doing tasks that they're good at but the energy levels just keep depleting. Um, so we say, if you've got to do a task that's a learned behavior, try and do an activity beforehand that's a realized or unrealized strength. So you go into your learned behavior uh, with energy. Um, and then when you've completed your learned behavior task, do another task from a realized strength or unrealized strength to bring your energy levels back up. Um, so that's what we talk about here with our learned behaviors. Um, so just some from the global data, um, the number one learned behavior globally um, is work ethic. So if that is in your learned behavior quadrant, you are amongst many, many other people in the world. Um, and if we break it down, it does make sense in that you know, we can work hard. Remember that you still perform well at it. But if we keep doing it, if we keep doing our work ethic, working hard 24-7, then we will get de-energized. It will be de-energizing. Um, and quite often we find that people with uh, a learned behaviour work ethic have a good work-life balance. So that's uh, our learned behaviours quadrant. We have our weaknesses quadrant. Um, so these things we perform poorly at. Um, and we say, if it 
isn't goal critical or career critical your weakness don't need to worry about it too much if it is think about ways could you use a, a realized strength or an unrealized strength with your weakness task um, to make it so it's manageable i'll give you an example um, i have a friend um, who's a teacher and um, I will get regularly, I'll get sort of certain times of the year, I'll get a text message going, oh, marking's got to be done by Friday, you know, not even started yet. Um, so there was one time, so I know that time optimizer is a weakness uh, of, of my friends. Um, hence him procrastinating, putting off the marking. Um, but I also know that competitive is one of his realized strengths. So I said, okay, for one hour, mark as many papers as you can. For every subsequent hour, you have to either equal or beat the previous hours. So now it doesn't mean that he necessarily enjoys the marking, but he's using one of his realized strengths with a weakness to overcome that so it doesn't become problematic. So that's what you can look to do um, if a, a weakness is something that is, uh, uh, that is key for your goals or career. Um, alternatively, there's other things like with experience over time or training perhaps you might be able to move it from a weakness to a learned behavior and perform well at it uh, then we have our unrealized strengths quadrant and this is one that people get most excited about so these are things you perform well you find energizing but you don't get to use them as frequently um, so it's really good people to understand um, how you can use them more in what ways could you use them more um, this is really great when it's looking at personal development this is our we talk about this being our area for potential greatest growth um, is looking at our unrealized strengths because they're things that we do perform well, we do enjoy doing them, but we're just not doing them as much. Um, so people get really excited exploring the unrealized strengths quadrant. Um, next slide here is some of the organizations who are strengths adopters. Um, so it's, you know, these are huge organizations that are realizing the benefits of a strengths approach. Uh, and the value of it as well. But let's look at some of the research. Think about benefits of strengths for yourself. Um, so people are happier and more confident when using their strengths. They have higher energy and increased productivity. Reduce stress and increased resilience. So in these times when people are suffering from burnout and stress, we can build their resilience uh, and increase their well-being all the better. Um, they're more likely to achieve goals and develop faster in areas of strengths. Remember my example earlier about I'm a right-handed? Right -hand, right you know, if I want to achieve my goals to write faster and neater, I'm more likely to achieve it by practicing with my right hand as opposed to my left. And people have more confidence in career decisions as well. So not just starting out in careers, but actually when looking to move um, within an organization or to another organization, when they understand what their strengths are, what, how they use those effectively. Um, thinking about to, uh, being self-aware and applying strengths. Um, so it helps with self-regulation when we're aware, um, making sure that we use them wisely, don't overplay our real life strengths. Um, look at what motivates us as well. Um, emotional intelligence, so what the strength spotting that we did the exercise we did earlier, so noticing in other people, those slight changes. Um, understands what our limitations are you know we do look at we do include a weaknesses quadrant things that you know perform poorly at um and think about and that uh, openness as well about being open and sharing your profile with people as long as you're comfortable to so that's with individuals looking now at uh for in the wider area now so in teams productivity is 12 and a half percent higher with a strengths approach um, so thinking about just for yourself, if you're 12 and a half percent more productive, but then with your colleagues as well, if they were, how much more we get achieve. Um, communication improves with the strengths approach. Um, and now we have a language for strengths, so you start using that more often. Um, delegation uh, is better. Um, and that's really sort of looking at uh, what tasks are coming up for a project. Um, what strengths are needed for those tasks and which individuals have the, the strengths uh, that are needed uh, and assigning work accordingly. Um, creativity and trust also increases as well with a strengths approach. 
Um, in organizations, customer satisfaction is 44% higher uh, in organizations that take a strengths approach. And the next one I always find interesting, so employee retention is 50% higher. Um, so I always feel that there's two costs to when people leave an organization. There's a financial cost of having to replace them in the recruitment process and getting them up to speed when they start. And there's also that knowledge and, and experience that's lost, the cost of that as well. So if we can keep our high performers, all the better. Um, employee engagement is six times higher um, with a strengths approach. Uh, and again, communication and delegation improves across an organization. And then finally, looking in careers, uh, students are 30% more, 30 times more uh, excited about their future when they understand what their strengths are. Um, they feel that they're more ready and engaged with career services, um, and also thinking around which careers will allow them to use their strengths more frequently. Let's look at uh, your profiles here now. So we're going to look at the Realized Strengths Quadrant. So if you've got your profile to hand, fantastic. Um, so just to recap again, so this is about uh, be your best self with the right strengths at the right time, right place, right context, um, right amount. Um, so understand your strengths, um, how they've been successful for you to date. So maybe just have, not necessarily today, but like, Afterwards, reflect on your strengths uh, and when you've, you know, what uh, examples have you got of when you successfully use them? Um, align your realized strengths to career and life goals, uh, making a plan, and I'll talk more about planning later at the end of the session. Um, so watch some exciting news about that. Um, and they say, don't overplay them, use them appropriately for your context. So my question for you about your realized strengths is, which are you most known for? Which realized strength are you most known for? So while people are typing, I am known in my team for adherence. Um, so I like to follow processes, have those rules and follow those. Uh, and I'm most known for that um, in, in my team. So that's one for me. But which are you most known for? Which of your real life strengths are you most known for? So we've got personal responsibility, creativity. Thank you for sharing. What else? People know humor, action, lovely organizer, another organizer. Excellent. What else are people known for their real life strengths? Service. Good. Good, good. So that's what you're currently known for. Connector, creativity, narrator, fab. So um, which are you most known for? First question. Second question. Which do you want to be known for? So which do you want to be known for? So which of your realized strengths do you want to be known for? Improver, good. Innovation, improver again. What else have we got? So for me, I have listener. Legacy, creativity, some good things coming through. Humility. Innovation and incubator, fabulous. You can combine those two as well. So that's really good. So what you may want to start doing now is thinking, how can I be known for this? How can I use this strength and start getting known for this realized strength that I would, you know, I wish to be known, uh, known for? So start scribbling down some notes. So that's our real life strengths quadrant. And as I say, we go anti-clockwise. So we move next to our learned behaviors. Um, so we say avoid burnout and use when needed. Um, explore the use and energy. How much are you doing it? How much does it drain you? Um, complete between things you enjoy it to manage your energy, that sort of learned behavior sandwich I talked about before. Do a task beforehand that is really energizing. 
And then after you learn behavior, do another task that's really energizing for you to bring those energy levels back up again. Um, is it career or goal critical? Find a complementary partner or use a strength to support you. So a complementary partner, it may be that someone um, has a realized or unrealized strength of your learned behavior. Maybe you could work together on that task. Um, or like the weakness example I gave uh, for my friend who you can do it for learned behaviors. So uh, combining uh, a learned behavior with a strength um, in order to get the task done. And so it doesn't become too draining for you. Um, but as I say, it's very common for this quadrant to have the most, um, most strengths in it for people because over time they can learn to perform many things well, but it might not necessarily be energizing and enjoyable doing them. So my next question to you is, what learned behavior is the most draining for you? What learned behavior is the most draining? Think about that now. So what learned behavior is the most draining for you? Uh, empathic. So for me, uh, judgment is one of my learned behaviors. And I think that's because I have incubators of realized strength. I need to think things through and process in my head. Um, so it's very draining for me when I have to make a very quick decision about something. Um, I'm the sort of person that if I'm going to buy something, I'll spend about three or four weeks researching it, looking at reviews, maybe go to the shop and have a look at it, and then still buy the first thing I was going to purchase, I decided on in the first place. Um, so let's look at some of the other things coming through. We've got work ethic, um, persuasion, courage and incubator, and learned behaviours. So just start a time optimizer, competitive. I've shared that one as well. Um, so it's important to remember you still do these well, but it can be de-energizing for you and draining for you. So when, again, now being mindful of what your, your strengths are, think about, well, if I do have to do this task that is for one of my learned behaviors, notice that, you know, it, or be aware that it could be something that impacts uh, your energy levels. And so you'll need to do something to bring the energy levels back up. Um, so we've got an adherence coming through and change agent as well. Um, so when I talked about the communication and the language uh, of strengths, again, it's helping us to think, um, right, what is it I'm doing? What strength is it I'm using? And is it energizing for me or not? Um, and just being careful of that. So that was question one. Question two is, uh, so how will you manage this now? So what burnt learned behavior is the most draining, part one, but how will you manage this now? How will you manage this now? So for me, with my um, judgment, uh, I know that maybe after I've made a decision, I probably want some time afterwards to reflect uh, and to go through it and use that incubator to process the decision. Um, so that's something that will rebuild my energy back, levels back up. So what would you do to manage your learned behavior that is the most draining for you? What activity could you do? So just waiting for people to start typing. So how will you manage your learned behavior? What activity? So celebrate others' success. Fantastic. So yeah, it doesn't have to be your own. Finding the balance outside work and other activities. Great. Wonderful. What else are people coming up with? How else are you going to manage your learned behavior? So you plan a diary to find a balance in activities. Good, good, good. I can't remember if, if, if the organizer was one of your realized strengths. I can't remember. Um, so yeah, playing a diary. What else do people come up with? How you'll manage that? So be spontaneous. Uh, use this time for growth. Excellent. Good. 
Boundaries around time you spend with people, yeah, making sure there's me time as well. Think about in tasks, term, tasks in terms of what's energizing, what's draining. Really like that. It's a great example. Well done. And you might want to keep adding to that uh, after this session as well. Next slide. So we're looking at the uh, weaknesses quadrant now. So being uh, open about them and that's the things that we may perform poorly at um, explore if it's career critical or having an impact if it's not don't worry about it too much um, focus on the results you want and use strengths to compensate so think about my friend who wants to get the marking done okay so using his strength of competitive uh, in, compa in conjunction with time optimizer weakness um, and ask for help be honest you know that authentic self coming through here just being honest about um, you know, something that you may struggle with. Um, so question is, which strengths would compensate for a career or goal critical weakness for you? Which strengths could compensate for a career critical weakness for you? So while you're typing, for me, um, narrator is a weakness for me. Um, and so I use my realized strength of growth to come up with different stories um, so that I have a nice library of stories to fall back on uh, when I need to use uh, the narrator weakness for me. So combining them. So which strengths could compensate for a career or goal critical weakness for you? Just waiting for people to finish typing. So what strengths could compensate, which strengths could compensate for a career critical weakness for you? Uh, so using growth to compensate for a weakness. Very good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I use my, my growth of learning and coming up with more stories and yeah, thinking about how I can use those effectively. What else would people say uh, which strengths are used to compensate for a goal or career critical weakness? Might take a bit more thought this question as you're exploring across a couple of quadrants here. So I'm just going to give people another few seconds to finish off typing before we move on to our unrealized strengths. So your weakness is writer, so try to be creative and cut out the boring jargon. Yeah, good. So bringing creativity into your writing, fantastic, like that. Maybe something for people to ponder. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not a straightforward uh, answer to this question sometimes. But let's uh, move on. So we'll look at our unrealized strengths. Oh, some more coming through. So weaknesses organizer should combine with realized strength in innovation and adaptable and learn their behavior in time optimizer. Good. So you've got a nice sort of strength dynamics coming together there. That's wonderful. So the exciting quadrant about your potential um, and just something else coming through now. Weaknesses drive set drive. Um, so using bounce back to encourage yourself, uh, improve it to compensate for adherence. Excellent. So great. You're starting to think now about how you can move forward using your strengths and your strengths profile. So with our unrealized strengths now, um, so these are the things you perform well at. Uh, you find energizing when you use them, but you don't get the opportunity to use them uh, as frequently. So we say explore reactions and motivations. Focus on what you need. What, on the love to, not should do, or must, a bit more. Um, find opportunities to expand and grow and gain experience. Um, and then set yourself to develop goals that energize you as well. But looking at your profile, which uh, of your unrealized strengths are you most excited about using in your career further? Which are you most excited about using in your career further?
Uh, being organized, good. Catalyst, fantastic. Which are you most excited? Mission, good. Quite a right, wide variety here. So we've got time optimizer as well. Uh, adventure, explainer, spotlight, resolver, legacy. Wonderful. A lovely array of uh, unrealized strengths you're excited about using. Incubator, a steam builder. Fab. So, creativity, what will you do? So what will you do then? So how are you going to use it? Um, the one that you're most excited about. What will you do? Right. <laughs> so with incubator, you're going to incubate. So you're going to take more time to start thinking things through and processing things, allowing yourself that time. Wonderful. What else? What else are people going to do? Uh, explore new opportunities. Good. Yeah, being open to those as well. Do tasks that motivate your life goals. Good. Well done. So again, it might be something you just start thinking about after this session as well. Looking at uh, the strengths family, so we have five strengths families. Um, the being, communicating, motivating, relating and thinking. So we group the 60 strengths uh, into the, each of one of these five families. Um, so looking at the data um, in the being family, humility is the most common uh, and courage the least. In the communicating family, explainer. Um, is the uh, most common and narrator the least. In the motivating family, we have improver is the most common and work ethic as the least. In the relating family, relationship deepener is the most common and relating, uh, sorry, enabler uh, is the least. And then finally, in the thinking family, resolve are the most common and time optimizer, the least common. Um, and we found that sort of time optimizer is now the number one weakness globally. Um, and it's it never used to be sort of certainly before the pandemic, um, it was nowhere near the, the number one weakness. Um, but we're doing some looking into why that might be um, as it's changed so dramatically over the couple of years. So that's just giving you some idea about global data. But thinking about embracing your strengths going forward. So. You've if, you, if you've taken the starter profile, you know, this is the careers guide is something that you can view if you have the introductory or expert profile um, and maximizing energy in your career. So there is a career guide section um, thinking about areas where you might gain a new experience um, and how sectors could combine. Um, so, for example, someone might be in IT, but it's you know it's saying well, marketing could be a good sector. You know, maybe you could do do IT in a marketing organisation. Um, it's good for helping set development goals for today and the future. Um, and also, it's a guide for reflection, conversation, research, and direction. So that's the career guide. Um, again, in the introductory profile and the expert profile. Um, there is a section on your potential, which looks at your unrealized strengths and gives you uh, advice, guidance and tips about how you may be able to use them more fre frequently and successfully as well. Um, so think about setting goals that develop the potential inside you. Um, bring more energy into your life because these are activities that you're not using as frequently, so you can bring more energy into it. Um, use for onboarding and thriving in a new role. And if you're happy to share with others so they understand you a bit better, you can have some great conversations um, around your strengths. Um, use to gain experience in new opportunities or careers. Uh, and think about how you can make a difference in the future by when you do use these uh, unrealized strengths more frequently. So that's, uh, yeah, the your potential section. 
thinking about applying strengths every day. So thinking of you as an individual, uh, first of all. So if you're comfortable and you're happy to share your profile with people, it's a great conversation to talk through your profile with someone. Um, for them to try and understand you, but also for you to you know, reflect on them and give examples of when you've used them to success or when they've been draining for you. Um, and this can be a really, really uh, rewarding conversation when you share your profile and have discussions together. Um, use the strengths language. So it's been said that if we don't have a language of something, we don't see it. Um, now, with the 60 strengths and the definitions, you have the language for it. You know, if you see someone, uh, I don't know, someone who has been very good at resolving problems, say, I noticed that you, you resolved that problem really well. And you think, like, you know, that's really helpful and you did it superbly. You know, giving that feedback using the strengths language um, can help really help communication and also uh, morale and esteem for people. Uh, the review the tips in your profile. So thinking about the advice of guidance given. And then set energizing goals and objectives around your strengths as well. As a team member, so if you are part of a team, um, strength spotting, spotting strengths uh, in other people. So we did that exercise right at the beginning and you wonderfully dis uh, displayed and demonstrated your um, strength spotting skills. And so keep using that. Notice when there are changes in energy, tone, pace, um, use of gestures, language um, for people uh, and become a real strength spotting expert. Um, complementary partnering on tasks. So if there is a, a learned behavior or weakness for you, can someone who has it as a realized or unrealized strength, can you partner with them? And, I'll, and also for the, your realized strengths and unrealized strengths, could you partner with someone who maybe has that as a learned behavior or weakness so that you're helping them out as well? So it really helps um, thinking about delegation and project planning um, when we focus on our strengths and what strengths are needed. Um, appreciation of team diversity. So we will all have different strengths. Um, in fact, the, the chance of someone having the same top seven realized strengths in the same order is just under one in two billion. So celebrate your uniqueness. And we are unique. And even if we do have some of the same strengths as other people, we will use them differently and we will use them successful to our own success in different ways. So appreciation of team diversity. Um, and just as we say, you know, there are we do have weaknesses as individuals um, and we will as a team, but we're probably going to be more rounded as a team in that um, where you may have a weakness, someone else will have it as a, as a strength. Um, and as I say, it improves communication, talking around using the strengths language. Um, as a manager, if you are a manager, if you are leading teams, um, understanding your collective team strengths, um, sharing profiles as long as everyone is comfortable, um, setting development, goal, development goals on, based on strengths rather than weaknesses. Um, you know, many, many years ago, um, at performance review time, it would be, well, you've done this well, Dan, but you need to work on this, this, and this. Uh, and it tends, so this is before strengths. Uh, for any, and the this, this, and this tended to be my weaknesses, things I wasn't good at, things that were de-energizing for me. Um, and so the focus was on tasks that actually weren't going to motivate me, weren't going to be enjoyable for me. Um, informed delegation, new project teams, like I've covered off before, and having those positive performance reviews. Uh, around strengths. So that's how we can like keep moving forward with strengths and, and uh, embracing them within our lives and really embedding them into our approach as we move forward. So if you have taken um, the uh, free starter profile, we do have, uh, you can upgrade. So we have an introductory profile, which is 12 pounds uh, plus VAT. Um, and in this, um, you will get a career, you have the option to have career guide. Um, you will have a planner, uh, the, sorry, your potential, should I say. Um, and in the introductory profile, it reveals up to seven realized and unrealized strengths, up to four learned behaviors and up to three weaknesses. Um, so it's a bit more of a fuller report, 
um, and it gives definitions and application advice for your, you know, for all the elements in the four quadrants. So that is our introductory one. Um, as I say, so you can upgrade the system if you just got a starter one and you want to see a bit more detail around your strengths. Um, and then we also have our expert profile, which is £35 plus the VAT. This covers off all six of your strengths. So you'll get to see in which quadrant um, your strengths are. Um, so it will cover off all 60. So on the right hand side there, you can get the list of full 60. Um, so in this instance, like 19 realized strengths, nine uh, unrealized, 24 uh, learned behaviors and eight weaknesses there. Um, so, and you get a description and advice and tips for each of the 60 in the expert profile. Um, so it includes everything uh, as the introductory, but say all 60 strengths are uh, covered off. And also it has the families as well. So you'll be able to look at your five strengths families uh, and see where the sort of, so if you on the screen here, we've got the, the circle there. So for the relating um, family, uh, this individual has six weaknesses in that family and then three um, uh, learned behaviors one realized strength and one unrealized strength. So it could be something that they don't do very well uh, and it can be draining for them. So maybe looking, exploring ways to use uh, the realized and unrealized strengths more to, to manage um, the learned behaviors and weaknesses. So you get your strengths family as well as part of that. So I mentioned earlier about some exciting news um, and we are launching on Friday a goals planner. So we've talked a lot about things today and, and as I said, we'll scribble those down, uh, make notes of what you're going to do and how you're going to use them. But on Friday, we will be launching uh, the goals planner um, within um, Strengths Profile. Um, this is only available on introductory and expert profiles. So you would need to upgrade if you wanted to use this. Um, but it gives you the opportunity to set your goals and think about um, your realized strengths and select three realized strengths you want to work on and what actions you would use, um, you will carry out using those realized strengths. Then looking at your um, learned behavior quadrant, what to be mindful of. And it may be, okay, well, if I have to use this learned behavior, then um, I'm going to do these activities before and after, or I'm going to go and speak to this person and see if they can help support me. Um, looking at a weakness that could impact your goal again, so you think about actions you could take. And then with your unrealized strengths, again, selecting three unrealized strengths and how you're going to use them more effectively to achieve your goal. Um, so that's, yes, yeah, so it is launching on Friday. Um, and that comes free with the introductory and expert profiles when you log onto the system. It's downloadable, so you can put it and stick it uh, on the wall next to you so you can keep a good eye on it. Um, and also you can uh, download a blank version. So if you just want to start um, do handwrite it, handwrite it rather than use uh, the system itself. So that's something we're very excited about that's coming this week. Um, thinking about other resources that we have as well. Um, we have on the website uh, self, so in strengthsprofile.com forward slash self, um, there's lots of resources there for you, um, blogs as well, uh, giving advice and guidance. Um, and if you want to explore uh, the strengths in more depth, we have the Strengths Profile book, uh, co-written by uh, Alex, Dr. Alex Lindley, uh, co-founder of Capfinity, and uh, Trudy Bateman, who is the director of Strengths Profile. Um, so that's strengthsprofile.com forward slash product forward slash books. So that's uh, something that you could um, uh, use there. Um, just had a question, can you explain the strengths families a bit more? So in strengths profile, we have 60 um, strengths. And what we try to do is, is group them, as it were, um, under certain headings. So we call these the families. So we have our, our five different families. So each of the strengths will be in one of the families. Um, and say, yeah, that comes with the expert profile and gives you a breakdown of um, in each family, which, are learn which of your strengths are weaknesses, learned behaviors, realized strengths and unrealized strengths as well. 
So that's it for me today. Are there any questions at all? Any questions or thoughts or reflections? As I say, this is the start of your strengths journey. I encourage you to embed it more in your life um, and use your strengths. Um, how do you link strengths to actual jobs? Um, so thinking about a task, so it could be, um, I'm just think off the top of my head now, task might be project management, where you need to be a planner, um, you need to um, be organised, um, and you need to be time optimizer as well. And so thinking, okay, who has those three strengths? And can we um, use that? You know, how could they use them? So almost breaking down the task and almost linking it to what strength would be used for that task. And then looking at which people have those strengths to use that to successfully. So do we have regular workshops? Um, we, we do this session uh, regularly and you, if you've signed up to our newsletter, you will get a uh, notification about it. And also if you have signed up to our newsletter, we put lots of uh, uh, useful information and in links to blogs that might be of interest to you as well. So um, if you've not done so yet, please do so. Um, but yeah, any more, anything else? I think what we'll do, we'll stop the recording now, but I'll hang around for a couple of minutes um, if people have any uh, further questions. But uh, thank you very much today. Thank you for like, being engaged and um, joining in with the session. Um, it was wonderful. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful and fantastic rest of the day.